This is going to be the first in probably a long series of videos about complex analysis. And I'm going to start at a very basic level, which is motivating the complex numbers in the first place. And if you're watching these videos, most likely you have heard about the complex numbers and are at least a little bit familiar with them. Um, but you don't absolutely have to be. Um, and I'd prefer you to get in the frame of mind where you can pretend you haven't heard of the complex numbers or don't know very much about them, um, because I want to convince you that um, there's a way where we can look at an obviously interesting problem and be forced to consider the complex numbers. So um, this is going to make this is going to be best if you follow along on the PDF, uh, and I'm going to put a link, it should be appearing on the, the screen here, um, so that's on a Google site that I made up. And so you can follow along that PDF, and in particular I'm going to be, in, a style I like to use is that PDF asks a lot of questions, and the best way, if you really want to learn this, is to try to do that on your own and then come back to these videos um, for hints and explanations. And don't just watch the video straight through. So um, here's some standard stories about why you would want to do the complex numbers. Um, one is supposedly you want to solve this equation x squared plus 1 equals 0. And we realize that there's no such thing as the square root of minus 1, and we just define some new number i and then minus i to be the, the so solutions to that equation. That's probably the most standard story you're going to see like in high school uh, mathematics. And the problem with it is that this is some formal gadget. And at the level of high school mathematics, you're often taught a lot of rules of manipulating these guys, expressions like 3 plus 2i, etc., um, but never given any actual use for them. And by use, I mean, what's a problem that we didn't require complex numbers to state and don't involve complex numbers in the solution, but that we use complex numbers to do the actual problem? Um, so this is, this will definitely come into it. This is fundamental about the meaning of i. It really, plus or minus i really are the solutions of this equation. But it begs the question of why should we need to solve this and why should we consider this a solution? Inventing some new symbol, is that really in, uh, truly coming up with a solution? Um, and certainly people in historically would have been agreed with that, said this doesn't make any sense or it's not useful. So the actual historical uh, root, the first place it shows up, interestingly enough, is in solving cubic equations. So for example, x cubed equals 3px plus 2q. Um, oh, and by the way, I should say that uh, these eventually these uh, videos are going to link up to Tristan Needham's book, Visual Complex Analysis, because that's a book that I'm using with some students. Um, this is intentionally supposed to be, this first exposition is supposed to be complementary to his introduction as to why you need complex numbers. But there's a lot of overlap, and he de de definitely mentions these two um, as not such a good motivation and a significantly better one, at least most, more historically accurate. So what is this geometrically? We're trying to intersect the cubic with a straight line. And I'm going to, let's assume that uh, Q is positive, which isn't super important, um, and assume that P is negative, just to make things simple. So that's a straight line with negative slope, and so that's going to have some unique intersection there. Um, so clearly there should be a real solution here to this equation, but cubics are not super simple to come up with a formula for. Um, it turns out that if we let, let's say z, this probably isn't the standard letter, but we're not going to do much with this anyway. Let's say it's the square root of q squared minus p cubed, and it turns out that if you let x equal the cube root of q plus c minus the cube root of q minus c, then it solves that equation. And you can verify that. Just You have to just cube this out and uh, foil it out carefully, and you get some wonderful cancellations, and it works. Um, 
But the interesting thing is, if p cubed is bigger than q squared, this would indicate the square root of a negative number. And that's taboo if you don't have some, some notion of complex numbers. And yet there's nothing that says that that's a weird case here geometrically. You should still get a real solution. And the cool thing is if you proceed with that and you proceed to think that this might make some sense and obey the usual rules of algebra, then this actually does give you a real number. And it's a real number that solves this equation. This is a very cool um, fact, and it is the historical origin of complex numbers. But uh, here's the trouble that I have with it. Um, is if you're a, uh, for example, in the college situation, um, thinking about complex numbers, um, you, this may look unfamiliar to you, and you might think, well, that's funny that I've never seen that before, or I've never used it. Maybe I saw it in a book once, uh, or it was discussed, and I've never really used it. Well, the fact is that we're not, unless you're a, a pure algebraist, we're not actually that much interested in finding exact solutions to cubics anymore. Um, it can be somewhat useful, but it's not a, an absolute... Uh, core problem in, let's say, practical mathematics, like for engineering and science, for example. Um, and in fact, this didn't open the floodgates to people using complex numbers. Um, it was not something that people realized, oh my gosh, we better find more uses to these ideas. People sa said, well, this is a pretty sketchy way to do things. It seems to work, but we're not real happy with this. Okay. So another possible story we could tell, which I like rather better. Oh, man. Let's not use that one. Sharpie's bleeding through here. Whoa, sorry about that. <laughs> um, there's a geometrical story, which I often actually use um, to motivate complex numbers in a trigonometry class. Um, and that is the algebra of complex numbers turns out to link to the geometry of the plane in a really beautiful way. Um, so I'm just going to say very briefly, this is going to definitely come up in what I'm going to talk about. Um, but just briefly, for example, it gives you a very cool way to use the algebra of complex numbers to derive, for example, the sum rules for sine and cosine which are often given rather obscure and weird derivations in trigonometry books. Uh, there's various ways to, to derive them, but it's, a, it's very cool to see how they come out of the algebra of complex numbers. Okay? Um, so it's really, really fundamental that the algebra of complex numbers does encode the geometry of the plane in a very cool way. But the truth is uh, there's other ways to do plane geometry. Um, you learn all of the sort of classical Euclidean way in a, most high school geometry classes. You can do analytic geometry of the plane with vectors. You can use matrices. Um, there's a lot of other ways to do it. So for me, it's still not the killer app. It's still not what's going to tell us, wow, complex numbers are something we really should use in our lives. Okay. So here's the start of the story. I don't want to make these videos, any of these videos too long. But here's the, the start of the story um, that I want to tell. The practical story starts with the analysis of oscillation. So, for example, a spring, a mass on a spring. Here's a mass. It has a, It's attached to a spring with some spring constant k. In the next video, we'll very briefly review the physics of this. It's not complicated physics, but we do want a little bit of physics because the whole point is it's supposed to be practical. Um, and then maybe there's some sort of damping. You could imagine it as friction, but it's not going to be the world's most uh, accurate version of friction. It's a diff different kind of damping to make things simple. Um, we want to analyze what happens when we stretch this out and let it go or push it and let it go and see what happens. We should get some oscillation and maybe the oscillations will damp out if there's some sort of friction or some other kind of damping that extracts energy from the system. Okay. Um, and it turns out that we're going to get two seemingly mathematically two very different kinds of behavior we could get from the system. And complex numbers will let us unify that into 
one method of solution and one master formula that unify two seemingly very, very different kinds of solutions to this very, very practical problem. Okay. Um, and it turns out that the way you analyze this mathematically will go back to s solving quadratics like this and coming up with fake formal solutions to them, but not just letting them sit there. Not just saying, oh, let's manipulate these guys and have no idea what they're for. We'll immediately put them to use. And the way we're going to put them to use will immediately tell us, um, it will have a link to the fact that the algebra that these formal symbols um, obey is going to encode the geometry of the plane. And it turns out that that aspect of the geometry of the plane is going to have to do with oscillations. So it's a beautiful story, but it's in embedded in this practice. And so it really encompasses a lot of this stuff. Um, but it's embedded in a practical story. Okay. Here's the disadvantage. Um, if you, in case, and this will tell you whether you want to continue these videos, um, we're get, this is, involves calculus. This is why this is not usually how you're introduced to complex numbers in high school. Um, an interesting question is why introduce complex numbers in high school when the killer app for them involves calculus? And that's a really good question. Um, so we're going to do a little bit of differential equations. They don't involve, this doesn't involve super fancy calculus. Um, at one or the another point, I might, inf uh, I'll probably talk about parameterized curves in the plane, which is like BC calculus and maybe towards uh, ba very basic calc 3. Um, but this, for me, this is, uh, this is the, really the right way to motivate the story. And, uh, and calculus is an essential part of that. Okay, so if you're interested in what I've been saying, Follow along in the next videos.